And when you feel forgiven, it will help you not to sin more, for sure not. It will help you to sin less. And when you feel accepted by God, you will be at peace. You, will, you, will, you, don't, you don't try to seek to find love in, in, in the wrong places, to feel this void inside of you in the wrong places. When you see how much God loves you, when you see how much God he cares for you, you will start to find love and seek love in the right places. Hi and welcome back to this teaching uh, I have for you and this teaching series that I have for you. You can also call it a seminar, uh, but it's, a, a, it's a, a series or a seminar that I have called God Gave You Emotions. And we have been to many parts of this teaching and some, some, some of this teaching you don't have to listen to the whole series to, to kind of get something out of it. Uh, so, uh, so don't feel, uh, feel free to, if you haven't heard pre previous uh, um, teaching, it's, it doesn't really matter. You can listen to this teaching today. And you can go back if you find this teaching inspiring, you can go back and listen to the, the other parts too of this teaching. So feel free to do that. But uh, today I'm um, I want to talk about what feelings can lead to when you let them control us. Uh, you know, God gave us emotions, and that's my, kind of my, my, uh, my headings, <laughs> you know. He did give, give you your emotions. And some people, they look at their emotions and, and, and think they are bad. But really, their emo the emotions is not bad. It's only bad when it, let, it leads you in the wrong directions. Sure, God uses your emotions to lead you too. I don't say that God doesn't use emotions, he do. <laughs> he has emotions like love and, and so on, compassion, uh, to feel, uh, feel compassionate for, for other people and so on, feel love. Sure, God uses those emotions. Uh, but um, we also have an enemy and he also wants to control your emotions. He wants you to, to lead uh, you um, and use your emotions to lead you away from the goodwill, the good things that God has for you. And last time I, I was talking about uh, the feeling of powerlessness and, and the feeling of, of that, you, that I never can succeed, that I never uh, measure up or I can, kind of, I, and I can never win in this uh, situation that I, I, I'm in, that I'm powerless. But I said that that's an emotion and the Bible tells us something else. The Bible tells us that we are more than conquerors. <laughs> and the Bible tells us that he can, God can do super abundantly about everything we ask and pray and, and hope for. You know, so, so we have a great God and God is greater, <laughs> greater than our emotions too. So, but the enemy wants to use our emotions to lead us away from the good will, from the good plans that God has for us and our lives. And today also in this world that we are living in today, you maybe heard this fear, this, this emotion, this uh, emotions, this, uh, this thought or this saying. And it says that if it feels good for you, it's right. You know, just follow your emotions. You know, if you only follow your emotions, you will, you will probably end up, uh, your life will probably end up in a bad way. If, you, if, if you're just governed by your emotions, it, it, it might do. I don't say it never, I always will do, but, but many times it does. Because if you just follow your emotions, you will go like this, and you, on your way, you will hurt many people. So this saying, that if it feels good for you, is not a godly saying. <laughs> it's not, it doesn't come from God, it doesn't come from the Bible, because it will hurt you, and it will hurt other people. And it's not God's wisdom. It's this world way of thinking, that if it feels good for you, if you just follow your emotions, it feels good, then, then we can do it. Not everything that feels good is, is, is good, you know. <laughs> it can feel good to, to do adultery, but it's not good for you. You know, it's good, not good for your marriage. If you, if you are a, 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 an adulterer, you can sure it can feel good <laughs> when you're doing it, but it's not good for you. After you will feel very bad, probably or bad in some ways, you will try to deny it, you maybe you will try to cover it up in some ways, and you will have fears, and so on. It's not good for you. So not everything that you, uh, that you feel like, you know, that you like to do, is good for you. 
and you, you kind of get the point. You know, yeah, I can feel to rob a bank, you know, it feels good to have money. So I can feel for going out and robbing a bank, but it's not good for me. It's not good for the people that may be being, uh, being involved or, you know, if you're uh, robbing a bank, you know, it's, it, it's a lot of things involved, other people involved too. So that's not, you know, that's not, not a good thing. Even though you can feel for it. <laughs> So my point is this, you know, you, I think you, you get the idea that even if it feels good for you, it's, it's not always good. We need to know God. We need to know uh, who God is. We need to know, know the word of God, what God is saying about things. And sometimes even it, it can feel bad in the, be in the beginning. You know, sometimes you, you, you feel, for instance, in, in, in a relationship, you know, sometimes I believe that that uh, you know, not sometimes I believe, but I I, I believe that uh, it's good when it comes to you know husband and wife, for instance, that they both are are believers. That's a good thing. And I'm, I know of people who are t making that, that that decision that they they will not marry that person because that person is not a Christian. And then things that we have in common, and uh, it's uh, the most important things for me we don't have in common so uh, that's why i'm taking that choice to uh, yeah to do that we go separate ways and we, we don't get married <laughs> because of that and i have met, met met many people who have, have done that actually and that doesn't feel good in that moment this is an uh, example but in, in sometimes in life we need to take decisions that don't, doesn't feel good at the moment but it will lead you to something good down the road uh, so, uh, so sometimes it, and even things that doesn't feel good in the moment, it can lead you to something good. If you know it's the will of God. You know, to, uh, for, for the first uh, disciples or the first uh, Christians too, there was a lot of decision they could have take, taken that wouldn't have led them to, to, uh, to martyrdom, you know. But some of them they experienced those things because they took a decision and then they didn't took, it out of, took the decision out of emotions. But because they, or in a way they did actually, their love for God was so, so, so big that the suffering that they, they had to, to endure down here, it didn't really matter. And I think the same for Paul that was thrown into prison, that was, you know, beaten and so on. In a way he was led by his emotions. <laughs> he was led by his emotions with his love towards God. And because his love for God was so strong, the other things didn't really matter. If it hurt him, if other people hurt him or, or physically hurt him and so on, it didn't matter so much because he loved God. And that emotion was stronger than the other emotions around him and the circumstances he, he experienced. And that can be in your life too. That's a guideline for us too. And I actually haven't written it down here. Uh, I actually was thinking about it right now. That the thing that needs to, to the emotions that needs to lead us and guide us, it must be the love of God. And if you know, if other things happens in our life, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> if bad things happens and so on, and we need to take decisions that that actually doesn't feel good in the moment, our love for God is stronger, and we know that God has something better for us down the road, and we don't go around and feel feel uh, sorry for yourself for a long time or self-pity for a long time and, and so on, we would just go on and say that, God, I know that you have something better for me. I know that you love me. So I take this decision because I know it's your will. And when you take uh, good decisions, you will have good feelings too. They will follow you. Those things will follow you too. Even though you take a hard decision, you will have uh, good emotions later on you will have actually good emotions and thank God that you took that decision and made that decision and you will thank God la later on <laughs> okay I, I will continue now and I will continue with with this thing I will continue to talk a bit little about sin how sin comes to sometimes control us and the reason why we sin many times is because we believe in a lie we believe in a lie that there is some not covered needs that need to be met. 
uh, especially as a Christian, we, we fall for this lie. Sure, sure, this, those who don't know God, how, how can, they, yeah, that it's different for them. It's not the same. Because they don't know God. They don't know the one who can satisfy your soul. <laughs> they don't know him. So, so for them it's kind of different. But for us as a Christian, why do we fall into sin? When we know what it, it, it's a sin, we know that sin is bad, you know. <laughs> it's different when, when, when people in this world. But, but for us as a Christian, we know that. So why do we, do we sin? And sure, it, it's applied to the non-Christians too, this thing. It, it for sure do. But we, we fall into this world system. This way, this, the, this, uh, the, the way this world system thinks and acts. We as Christians, we, we get influenced by that too. And this world is saying, saying all the time to us, there is a need that we need to be met. There's always an undiscovered need or an undi undiscovered needs or a, a need that you have that you haven't been met yet. And that's the, often the thing that leads us to sin. If you read about the, the, the two first people in this world, Adam and Eve, they were deceived into believing that they have un, undiscovered needs or un, non, non, non filled uh, what to say? That they, they didn't ha had some needs that hadn't been f fulfilled yet, and that was the thing that caused them to fall. And they were deceived by the voice that saying that God has something hidden from you. God has something he hasn't told you yet. The devil kind of appealed to an uh, uh, unmet need that I had, that I thought I had, but it was just a seduction. It wasn't real. It was not a truth. God had not hidden anything from them. They were already like God, for they were created in the image and likeness of God. So they believed in the lie that they were not like God, that they had some needs that they need to be met. They had some need that was not covered. And this is the devil's seduction today too. When Jesus died on the cross, he restored us, us back to, the, to what, what the Bible calls the first Adam. What the Adam had done wrong, we would be, be restored back to, to, the, to the right Adam, <laughs> uh, which is Jesus. And uh, Jesus now lives within us. He is in us. Jesus, uh, God gave us his righteousness, his dominion, and his spiritual authority. And most of all, our, our rightful relationship with God. We have the relationship with God right now. And, and that's maybe the need that we, we are looking for. Relationship. It's always, that's, that's a people's greatest need. Fellowship. And some, sometimes you get into that, that disbelief that you, you still don't, that God is not with you. He's not for you. When you choose to become a Christian, it, the Bible tells us, tells us that you have been one with Christ. You are in Christ. And actually all needs that you have have been covered in Him. The peace you're looking for, the joy you're looking for, the hope, all of that we already have in Him. But because we are fooled into thinking that there is something more we need something more. We fall for the same lie as Adam and Eve, that there is an uncovered need that we have. And we all have this, this need to feel loved and accepted. And we are supposed to give these things to each other. But because we live in a non-perfect world, we experience disappointment and rejection and so on. And if you seek this, this need to be met, this need of love, to be, uh, this need to be loved, from humans, humans, we will dis be disappointed down the road somewhere. Because human souls are not perfect. <laughs> but if you see that we always are accepted and loved by God, even when we have done something wrong, and you know religion has come in here too and, and messed things up. Because uh, religion says that if you do something wrong, watch your know, little eye what you do because a father up above is looking down and will hit you with a club. And, uh, the song doesn't go quite like that, but, but that's the feeling you have sometimes when religion comes along. That when you do something wrong,
God is, is there with a club and then he wants to hit you in the head with it and he wants to condemn you when you've done something wrong. And that creates a vacuum inside of you too. That, 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 still, that, that kind of feeds this feeling of, of not being enough. Or not. This, this feeling of, of uh, there, is, there is a need that needs to be met. The feeling of not being loved. Condemnation will steal this, this, this peace, <laughs> this feeling of not being loved. You're thinking that God, God is not loving you now. God is not, doesn't love you now because you have done this sin and that sin and, and so on. But can I tell you the truth that is not so? You know, if you see, you know, it, it's, it's in my darkest moments when I see that I really have messed it up, that I really, that, that God kind of have met me. And I said that, and I kind of heard God say sometimes to me that, you know, I still love you. It's like he's holding his hand around me and saying, I still love you. I still love you today. It doesn't matter what you have done. I still love you. Forget about yesterday. You, I, I still love you. I have forgiven you. I am forgiven. You are forgiven today. You know, and, and when you feel these things, that when you feel forgiven, it will help you not to sin more, for sure not. It will help you to sin less. And when you feel accepted by God, you will be at peace. You, will, you, will, you, don't, you don't try to seek to find love in, in, in the wrong places, to feel this void inside of you in the wrong places. When you see how much God loves you, when you see how much God he cares for you, you will start to find love and seek love in the right places. You will try to run to Him. When you have done something wrong, you start to run to Him, not away from Him. That's what people usually do. They run away from Him. But you really need to run to Him, not away from Him. Because He is standing there, waiting for you. And He has always loved you. But as I said, sometimes the religion have, have messed this up. And uh, legalism and so on, it has, uh, it has messed it up. It says that as long as you, you measure up, you are accepted. And this is the world system too. If you measure up, if you uh, become like, uh, if you do this and this and that, if you measure up, become something, mean something in this world, you be a great speaker or be a president or something like that, if you, if you become like that, then, 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 yeah, then, then you are successful, then you are accepted. But you know, people in high positions too, they, they still have this void inside of them. Because all of us need, have this need for being loved. And religion doesn't, it just make, makes things worse. Legalism makes things worse. This, it's made this void even bigger. That's why sometimes even Christians can, can sin more in a way than non-Christians sometimes. And, and, and sin can be many things, you know, I'm not going to go into that, but, but, uh, but even proud and, and not, not confessing sins or, or kind of, uh, yeah, they do a lot of things. I've seen Christians do a lot of things, denying things and, and, uh, and be proud and so on. And there's a lot of sins <laughs> that we can do because we, we, we haven't, this, this void inside of us hasn't been met. We believe in a lie. And as a Christian, it has been met by Christ, by the one who lives inside of you. You need to remember the one who lives inside of you. He's there. He doesn't fall out every time you do a sin or something like that. He is there all the time. You don't have to strive on your own to, to fill this void either anymore. Because God is there. He has fulfilled it. He, the void is filled already. It has been filled with Jesus. And you just have to get your focus on Him on the one who lives inside of you. And sin, you can actually say that, that sin is this. All the things that we try to do apart from God. All the things we try to do, do, do on his own. You know, like religion too. They try to do it apart from God. They try to, if I can just, just reach up there, here, here, then God will meet me here. It's, no, it's not like that. <laughs> you know, that's a sin. <laughs> that's also a sin. To try to follow the law and try to do your best is actually still a sin. <laughs> because you don't see what Jesus has done for you. You need to see what he has done for you. 
And the focus is not longer sin, but it's on who won, the one who did something with sin. I don't say there is no sin. <laughs> I, I'm not agnostic, uh, people, uh, or something like that. I'm not, I'm not like that. Sin is a problem still. But the problem is there because we don't see the truth. We don't see the truth about who lives on the inside of us. When we truly see that, when, when we truly see that all the things that we are, have been longing for and all the things that we, we need is already there. The love that we need is already there, it's on the inside of us. There is no unfulfilled desires, <laughs> really, when we see the one that lives inside of us. When we see the love that God has for us. But as I said, you cannot be deceived by the devil and you have been misled by your emotions to think otherwise. That is not so. Just as that, 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 the enemy lied to Adam and Eve. That there had to be something more. God, you need, you need to do something more. There have to be something more than what God, Jesus, already have done. That's actually the lie. That's the, that's the you, don't, you, you don't think it like that or people don't say it like that. But that's actually the, the basic. <laughs> You don't think that what Jesus did, and a religion is like that. The law is like that. If you st still believe that you need to follow the law, you don't believe that Jesus, that what, what, what Jesus did was enough. If you still believe that it, it, it depends on your good deeds, how much God loves you, uh, or if you go to heaven, <laughs> or something like that, or that, that even if God has satisfied you with, when, when you have prayed and fasted and done all of the spiritual things, then God is, is satisfied with you, and you can feel good about yourself because you have done those things. If you put your trust in those things, it's still a sin. <laughs> because you put yourself, your trust in you and what you have done, not what God has done, not what Jesus has done. You need to put your trust in what, not what you have done, what the, not what you have achieved. It's nothing about that. It's about what Jesus has done, and that's the one thing we need to see. We need to see this. It's about what He has done. Not what I need to do and try to do, but what Jesus Christ has already done. And, and some, when people hear the, the message of grace, which is I kind of partly telling you now, and I, I do tell a lot about grace, that's one of, my, uh, yeah, one of the things I really want to share, is about the love of God, the grace of God. So, so some people may be starting to think, and I've seen people, even, even if I have said what I'm saying now, I, uh, you know, I have seen people go out and, and, and sin more <laughs> because they misunderstood grace. I don't think they misunderstood, uh, you know, yeah, they, they misunderstood grace. Many people, they can misunderstand grace, what grace really means. And they had the same problem in the first church. There were two kind of, there were two parts, two kind of groups in a way that um, the, yeah, the New Testament is written to in a way. There was two problems in the, in the first church. One problem was that the people wanted, want some, uh, some um, believers, new believers and so on. They still believe that they need to follow the law. That was one part. Galatians is about that. You can read about it in Romans, and and uh, yeah, you can read in, in most of Paul's letters, um, and you ha but you have also have another ditch, <laughs> and that was to uh, that was the Gnostic that de denied sin, that sin existed, and John is talking to them especially. Uh, you can find it in Paul's letters, letters too, but but uh, especially John is talking towards the, against them. Uh, he's talking about Jesus came in flesh and blood and so on. G and John talking about the Gnostic. Because uh, yeah, they didn't believe that there was something called sin and, and so on. But uh, I, I have no time to go there today. So, um, but but the, the, the problem in the first church too was, there was that, oh, if we are under grace, then we can go out and sin as much as we want. And then the answer that Paul has to this question, this thing, I think if you really preach grace, this question will always comes up. It will always comes up. Oh, so I can go out and sin so much as I want. No. 
not at all. <laughs> Read uh, Paul's answer. You can. I have done not. I have time really to go there today, and you can study it for yourself. Study Romans six, where it really says in the two, 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 two first verses there it says, no, no forbid, <laughs> forbid that you do. Why should you do it? Why should you fall into sin again? If you have died with Christ, raised up in a new life, and you have died to sin, why should you be the slave under sin again? Why should you follow sin if you are dead to sin? And that's the message of the Bible, you are dead to sin. Sin is not the not master over you. But you can take a choice and sin <laughs> still, because you still have a choice. And you can let your emotion lead you to do it. And often it is our emotions that lead us to do the bad things too. So, but you can, you have, you can master your emotions. You can control them. And that's the good news. If you see the love of God, see that there is no uh, unfulfilled needs in you, actually. If you, you know, study Jesus and all of these other things, all of these other needs that you have, it will be met. <laughs> All the emotional needs that you have on the inside of you will be met. And I'm talking about the emotional side of it. Even if you are alone on a, on a cottage uh, far away, God is still there. God can still meet you there. You can still be met. <laughs> Even if you don't have a wife or a husband, you can still have this peace on the inside. You can still have joy on the inside. It doesn't mean that God doesn't want to give it to you, but, but and, but, but, but you can still have peace, you can still have joy, even if you have not the, all the circumstances in the right order <laughs> or in the right way. You can be in a prison and still have joy on the inside and feel, feel joy on the inside and feel loved by God. You can still do that. So, uh, yeah, and that's what, what I had for you today. And, and still, f please follow me. And next time, I'm going to talk about emotions and our health, how they, they are connected. And that's a very, very exciting part of this, uh, this series. So, uh, so please feel, feel free to come back and listen to this, uh, this, uh, this uh, teaching that I have for you, this seminar or t teaching I have for you that God gave you emotions. And I, can, I, I will tell you next time about how emotions can make us sick, <laughs> but I can also tell you how emotions can actually heal you. They can both make you sick, but it, it, they can also heal you. So I'm, I'm to, we'll talk about more about that. And it's actually in connection in, in what I've been talking about to do today, too. So it's kind of an extension of what I've been talking about today. So, uh, but to come back and, and listen to that. And then also in the end, I'll just give you uh, an information that uh, if you want to listen to my podcast, I have it uh, on Spotify and on iTunes. Uh, not iTunes anymore, but uh, pod, uh, Apple Podcast, uh, and you can find uh, my videos on YouTube, YouTube channel. Feel free, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel, and and also Facebook. Go to my Facebook page, Good News for Broken Hearts, and and find out more, more about this ministry too, and and about the ministry I'm doing in Northern Thailand, and uh, and also find out how you can help us in any ways, and if you want to give a donation to, you're welcome to do so. So go to Good News for Broken Hearts and find this information. God bless you.